So welcome everyone, I'm Philippe Perez and I'm going to present the thesis Control of ACDC Microgrids with Renewables in the context of Smart Grids, including the Ancillary Services and Electric Mobility. This is a double degree thesis convention uh, from Paris Sacré University in France and from Federal University of Itajubá in Brazil. My advisors are Françoise Laminabilagarrig and Gilles Neidan from Paris Saclay and Paulo Ribeiro for, from Unifei. So the thesis contents are, we start with a brief intro introduction, then we provide the thesis proposition, and we start with the DC side of the mi microgrid where we propose the control strategy and provide some simulation results after we discuss about the AC microgrid, where the virtual inertia approach is given, and we also provide simulation results. Further, we, pro we discuss the conclusions of the thesis, propose uh, some further results, and then we provide the thesis outcomes. So we know that the electrical grid is going through a revolution since the years 2000, and this is the first fact of it is the liberalization of energy markets and the privatization of power companies. Also, the reduction of fossil-based research is a target for power companies where the integration of renewable energy sources are increasing every, every day. Also, the, con the constant growth of load demand and the integration of modern loads based on power electronic deficits uh, and the access to electricity of poor communities has also bring uh, new impacts to the system. And the development of the power electronic deficits and the information and communication technologies into the grid compose what we call as smart grids. So we are going to a traditional grid unidirectional grid to a smart grid where composed of a number of elements. And we know that these modern power networks have new challenges for the operation and control of power system. So the high penetration of renewables that has intermittent feature relate to voltage and power fluctuations in, in the grid and also the introduction of power electronic deficits that has a fast control response, but it also brings harmonic issues, interaction between co controllers and have a weak overload capacity. So this power electronic may bring the reduction of inertia in the system and cause frequency problems and has a poor inertial response. So in this context, the standard control techniques are not able to keep the operation of the system inside the desired margins of stability. So we are going from a high inertia system with based on rotating machines to a low inertia system based on power converters. So another aspect is the transportation systems where electrical vehicles like metros and subways can also bring a great impact from the demand point of view because they require a significant amount of energy and it may bring congestion to the distribution lines. So the trainways uh, have a braking recovery energy where the motor of the train becomes a generator during the braking process, producing a counter torque that injects power to the grid. So it generates usable energy, but this regenerative braking process brings burst of power in, uh, into the system, and we may deal with perturbations and instability problems. So in, the case, in this case of study, we have bring some data from the Paris subway where the power peaks are about 500 kilowatts to one megawatts in a few seconds. In the regenerative braking process, a dedicated converter is used to absorb the energy from the braking process here. 
So as you can see, we can have a power, well, a positive power in, uh, absorbed, and then the British generative braking trait takes place. So the inertia problems, uh, we know that the distribution energy sources are basically composed of power electronic devices. So the power converters are unable to have a natural inertial response like con as conventional synchronous generators. Therefore, the power system has, as I said, a low inertia characteristics. In, in this case, the frequency and the voltage are deteriorated. So as a consequence of the lack of inertia, we may have instability problems. A good example is the 9 August 2019 blackout in UK, where the main cause of the blackout was the reduction of inertia in the system. So as you can see, as we integrate renewables in the system, in a power system, the frequency of the system, the frequency variation and Rukov are deteriorated. So we may uh, have a worse frequency response to the system. And this needs to have a solution for that. We need to propose a solution. And here are the proposed solutions that uh, are bringing in this contest. So the microgrids can upgrade the operation of distribution system by using energy storage units to provide power balance and voltage stability in the grid. And the DC microgrids can be a better solution to integrate renewables since the electronic de devices are naturally DC. And in this contest, the nonlinear control also can be an interesting solution because we can work in a wider operation system where the nonlinearities of the system are considered. So strong, strong perturbations and the nonlinearities of the system is considered in the control strategy. So as a consequence, the nonlinear control may have stronger stability problems considering the fit, the feature of power systems. Also, the power converters can emulate the behavior of synchronous machine via the virtual inertia concept. So the inertia emulation is a significant solution that can improve the frequency responses of the system and provide inertial support. So we can uh, deal with the unbalance of the system and the frequency response by using this, this uh, proposition. So here, uh, the thesis proposal is to develop a hybrid AC microgrid composed of a number of elements. So this microgrid is uh, built based on a comparison with Efficacity, which is a research institute in France, and RATP, which is the uh, subway company in Paris, and based on that, they are building a smart train station. And we are using this uh, model as the grid, as the thesis proposal of the, uh, of the microgrid. So uh, basically we have the ADC bus, which is composed by a supercapacitor. And here the supercapacitor target is to attain the stability on the DC bus of this grid. The battery uh, target is to provide power flow balance in long term, and the PV system is the main generation of the system, and it can provide power from a irradiation profile. The DC load is the generalization of all DC load demand in the DC side of the grid, and the, the, the train braking is the regenerative braking process to inject power into the grid. The connection between the DC bus and the AC bus is made via a voltage source converter where we can connect to a main grid, which is given by a strong grid modeled as an infinite bus. And also we can have a weak grid, which is, which is given by a diesel generator and an AC load. So here, the DC side of the microgrid must provide ancillary services to improve the stability of the AC bus. 
So the thesis, the thesis contribution are, we are designing a flexible ACDC microgrid able to integrate different kinds of energy sources and also storage units such that we can properly supply a local load and provide uh, ans ancillary services for the AC side of the grid. To do that, we may build a nonlinear model of the microgrid where we assure the power flow regulation and voltage stability, and also we can provide the injected power from regenerative brake process, uh, taking a look on the stability of the system. So in this proposed control strategy, we can solve the no minimum phase problem of the CDC converters, and via the uh, and via the non uh, non linear control strategy, we can guarantee the operation of each device of the system. So a rigorous stability analysis is carried out via Lyapunov technique, where the stability properties of the system are provided. And at the end, we can use the DC microgrid to provide ancillary services to the AC grid, where an adaptive virtual inertia approach will be proposed. So here we have the electrical scheme of the microgrid. Uh, the supercapacitor and the battery are connected to the DC bus via a bidirectional bus converter, where we can uh, we are controlling voltage, the output voltage on the supercapacitor and the current on the battery system. The PV system is connected via a conventional bus converter, where we, we control the current, and the the train system and the DC load system are connected via a bulk converter where we are controlling the uh, the out the input voltage of the converter and the output voltage of the converter. Sorry. Uh, the integration of the grid is made via uh, the VSC converter where we are controlling the injection currents to the AC side of the grid. So first, the target of the supercapacitor is attain the stability in the DC grid. So to provide that, we may control voltage VC2 in a time varying way, such that the stability of the DC bus is assured. So the straightforward uh, application is use VC2 as the control output of the system. And by doing that, via feedback linearization, we can compute the control law such that we linearize the dynamics of the voltage VC2. And here we may have a problem, which is when uh, the current cross the zero, we have a singularity. And also the closed loop zero dynamics are shown to be stable. So taking the Jacobian matrix of the system, the eigenvalues of the linearized dynamics of uh, the current, the current, which is the zero dynamics, are positive when VC2 is higher than VDC, which means that when the supercapacitor is in the discharge mode, we may deal with unstable zero dynamics. And then we have the no minimum phase feature. So here we have a singularity problem and the no minimum phase feature because the zero dynamics are unstable. So we may propose a different control scheme, which is a control induced time scale separation, where the supercapacitor system is split in two interconnected subsystems, where X is VC2 subsystem, which is the voltage subsystem, and Z is IL3, which is the current subsystem. So uh, we allocate here voltage VC2 to be much faster, to be much slower than the current. And then we have the explicit time scale separation where the singular perturbation condition is created. Therefore, we can design the uh, control of the subsystems independently. So the first step is to control the current 
IL3 in a desired reference yet to be designed, where via feedback linearization, we compute the control law of the system, taking V3 as an additional input that uh, impose linear dynamics to the current, and alpha 3 is an integral term, term to eliminate the steady state error. Here, the constants K3 and K3 alpha are, are positive constants that can be chosen by linear techniques. So, uh, as a consequence, we result in the boundary layer dynamics model, where VC2 dynamics uh, consider IL3 already in its equilibrium point. So here, taking the control input as IL3 dot by dynamical feedback linearization, we obtain the full state transformation with no zero dynamics, where the current reference can be easily computed by integrating the control input. Here, we can see also that IL3 squared appears in the equation. So that's why also we choose IL3 dot as the control input. So uh, the lead derivatives can be deduced here to calculate the control inputs where we obtain the closed loop dynamics for VC2 and the K2 and K2 alpha are chosen such that we assure the time scale separation of the voltage subsystem and the current subsystem. So the singular perturbation analysis. So we can, control, we can compute the control input H such that Z, which is the cur current subsystem, converges to the Z reference by giving the desired dynamics for Z, where A is a positive constant equal to one over epsilon and R is a nonlinear function. So such that R, the norm of R, converge to zero as z tilde goes to zero. So considering a small enough epsilon, we may result in the closed loops, loop dynamics uh, of the, which is the standard form of singular perturbation. And here, so we can call in the singular perturbation analysis and understand that if the reduced model is exponentially stable, so a reduced model is obtained, and if we prove that he, it is exponentially stable, the original system is also exponentially stable. Therefore, there exists a control law based on Z reference, such that I can exponentially stabilize X in a desired reference given by speed of convergence of B. And here B needs to be much slower, much smaller than A. So here we provide the singular perturbation analysis and provide the control strategy for this uh, supercapacitor subsystem. So next uh, is the battery system. And here the control target is to control the current IL6 so we choose the, this current as the counter input. And, and also we have the same model here, but here the, the control strategy is different because I'm choosing IL6 as the control output. And the reference of this current is given by a secondary control where this secondary control considers the power flow balance in the microgrid, the state of charge in the energy storage units, and the limitation in the battery. So based on feedback linearization technique, we may compute a control law such that we impose linear dynamics to the current and the stability analysis of the zero dynamics is made locally by a Jacobian matrix where the non-controlled dynamics are VC4 and VC5. Next, the PV system, uh, the target here is to control the current IL9. So taking current IL9 as the control output, we uh, have to provide the reference of this current, which is given by a MPPT algorithm, such that we can extract the maximum power from the PV array 
And this algorithm is based on an incremental conductance algorithm. So given this reference, we can also, by feedback linearization, compute the control law and linearize the dynamics of the current. And here, the stability analysis of zero dynamics is made via Jacobian matrix, where VC7 and VC8 are the non-controlled dynamics. So next, we have the DC load. Here, the DC load is modeled as a current source where we must attain the voltage stability to properly supply the load inside of the grid requirements. For that, we are taking VC11 as the control output. And here, as we can write the system like this, the straight forward application is to use backstepping technique where a reference trajectory IL13 is, pro, is calculated such that we linearize the dynamics of VC11, and by taking a Lyapunov function candidate, we can uh, design the control input of the system where the result of the Lyapunov derivative is given. So by taking this Lyapunov function as the desired one, we may compute the control input such that we have that the voltage VC11 is controlled in the desired reference. Next, we have the braking recovery system. Here, uh, the voltage on the train during the regenerative braking process increases. Then, if we control voltage VC14 in a desired reference, which is given by the nominal voltage of the train, when the regenerative braking takes place, the difference of voltage between VT and VC14 produces a current that is injected to the DC bus of the grid. And then we can control the power injection during the regenerative braking process. So the target here is to control VC14. And if we choose VC14 as the control input output, we may also result with the no minimum phase problem because this is a book converter. So uh, we may also use the control-induced time scale separation where the first step is to control the current IL16 in a reference yet to be defined. So via feedback linearization, we compute the control law and linearize the dynamics of this current and the boundary layer model is obtained. And here, we also consider that the current subsystem is already in its equilibrium point. And by choosing IL6 dot as our new control input, we allow full state transformation of the system. And by deducing the lead derivatives, we can compute the control input. And an additional input is used to uh, perform, to produce the linear uh, behavior for the voltage and the gains K14 a K14 alpha are chosen by Paul's allocate Paul's placement. The AC grid is connected via voltage source converter where we use a synchronous reference frame PLL. So with that we may obtain from the uh, the voltage of the grid the main grid modeled as a strong grid, which means the infinite bus, we obtain one per unit of VD and VQ is equal to zero. So uh, the target here is to control the currents, which is the direct, direct and a quadrant currents of this, the VSC converter, such that we may provide ancillary service to the grid so we have the reference of active and reactive power, which is given by a secondary control such that we can provide these ancillary services. And uh, we have a direct application that relates ID with active power and IQ with reactive power. Therefore, by controlling these currents, we may inject the desired amount of active and reactive power. So by feedback linearization, we also can linearize the dynamics of the current. And here, 
the zero dynamic is the voltage VC17, where we can find the region of uh, stability, of local stability, such that the Jacob, uh, the eigenvalue of the linearized dynamics of VC17 uh, is negative, which means it is locally stable. So the system in interconnection is, is the DC bus, which is the point of common coupling of all devices in the grid. And the voltage dynamics are given by the sum of each equipment of the grid, which interconnection with the DC bus, flew, where the current is flowing through this node. So here, VDC voltage is not directly controllable by any control input, but the target is to use the supercapacitor subsystem to attain the stability on the DC bus. So in this approach, we may compute a time varying VC2 by proposing a Lyapunov function where the all remaining dynamics of this system are considered in this Lyapunov function. So here, we have a Lyapunov function candidate considering the voltage and all interconnected a system into the DC bus. And to investigate the stability of the Lyapunov function, we may introduce, we may compute the time derivative of the Lyapunov function, where we can see that VC2 explicitly appears in this equation and the terms Psi are related to the dynamics of the interconnection of the other devices in the DC bus. So, we, we know that the voltage VC2 is the remaining degree of freedom in the system. And we can compute by backstepping a desired a voltage VC2 calculated such that we obtain the uh, Lyapunov, the times derivative of the Lyapunov function, and it results in the input to state stability, like a Lyapunov function, where we are assuring the stability of the DC bus. As you can see here, we have the, that the system is ultimately bounded towards a error around the equilibrium point, which is given by the reference of VDC, VDC star. So uh, here we can show these properties where we can affirm that exists the functions alpha, which belongs to K infinite class, where we can road the inequality here, where the beta and the gamma function are K infinity, and VDC is playing the role of a virtual input. So, so we have a limited input here where the system results should be a input to state stable system. So next, we may give our main result here. So given the problem, we have the mathematical model of the system, which is the nonlinear model of the microgrid. And considering the reference provided from the secondary controller, we can uh, correctly satisfy the power balancing in steady state and we need to develop the control laws such that we can assure the, the asymptotic stability of the grid. So with this problem, we can uh, give the theorem where considering the equilibrium points, the perturbations of the system and the control gain, the proposed control laws solve the problem where we know that exists a suitable function beta, which belongs to class KL, and a gamma class K, such that we hold this inequality here, where we, we see here the input to state stability properties. So now we have the simulation results, which is given in a SimPower system to blocks from Simulink and the detailed model of the system is built and the nonlinear control is written in this uh, mathematical environment. So here we have the controlled currents where the PV current is in green here following a irradiation profile. In red, we have 
the battery current, which has a piecewise constant uh, variation to provide the power flow uh, of the system, and the voltage, the current uh, in blue, is the current of the supercapacitor, which is varying to attain the stability on the DC bus. In the second figure in head, we have the regenerative braking system, where we can uh, clearly see the injection of power during a few seconds, which represents the regenerative braking. In blue, we have the current in the DC load, and in green, the current injected in the VSC converter. The controlled currents ID and IQ to provide the active and reactive power to the AC grid are also well controlled and given by a secondary control. Uh, the reference is given by a secondary control. On the right side of the slide, we have the controlled voltages. Here, VC2 is varying such that we attain the stability in the DC bus. And as we can see here, we have fast convergence and uh, smaller overshoots. So these overshoots are about 2% of the nominal voltage. So we assure uh, the proper control of the system. And also the DC bus, the DC load voltage is correctly controlled with also small transients and fast response. And also the train is controlled to provide the regenerative braking to the grid, where the, the burst of current during the regenerative process is absorbed by the supercapacitor. So we may compare the proposed nonlinear control with a traditional linear control given by a PI controller. So by doing that, we can see that the nonlinear control presents smaller overshoots and faster convergence compared with the PI controller control in uh, the voltage on the DC bus of the grid, okay? And by inserting extreme variations in the system, we can see the limitation of the PI controller where after a perturbation, the voltage VDC diverges for the PI controller. So here we can see that the PI is valid only in a small region and can suffer control interference. So we may should retuning these gains of the PI to provide the stability of the grid. And in the nonlinear control, we, we keep the same tuning of controller for all simulated perturbations in the system. Also, the control robustness is proposed here where we insert parametric errors in the grid elements. So we can compare also the behavior of the linear control with the proposed nonlinear. We also see that uh, the PI has higher overshoots and slower uh, convergence. And M, we increase the error to 25%, the, DD, the voltage on the DC bus also diverges for the linear controller. So also we can see that the PI controller is limited. Uh, next, we are going, we are moving on to the AC side of the microgrid. So here, the connection between the DC side and the AC side is given by a voltage source converter with an LC filter and the AC side of the microgrid is composed of a diesel generator, a load, and an impedance line. So here we have written the state space model of this side of the, the microgrid, and we are proposing to use the virtual inertia. So the virtual inertia consists in a power electronic de device emulate the behavior of a synchronous machine, where we can emulate the energy stored in the rotating mass of synchronous generators, such that a power converter can provide a frequency response and response to the disturbance of the grid. So with that, we have the behavior of a synchronous machine in a power converter, so that we can provide ancillary service to the AC side of the grid, which means frequency and voltage regulation, inertial support, 
and improve the, the stability of the system. So basically, the virtual inertia consists in use the swing equation of a synchronous machine, which is implemented in the power converter. We can see in the figure that using the virtual inertia approach, we can improve the frequency response by reducing the frequency nadir and also improve frequency Rukoff and frequency variations. Here, we propose the virtual inertia through the virtual synchronous machine, where we write the swing equation of a synchronous machine based on the power balance, active power balance, and a dumping factor. Also, the inertia coefficient can be defined as here, so a power converter can emulate a moment of inertia in the system. In this approach, we may have the direct approach, which means that the drug controllers provide the, the active and reactive power reference to the swing equation in the inertia emulation and the voltage regulation. And these outputs directly provide the PWM signal to the uh, converter. So that's why we have the straightforward approach here. So here we present the droop control scheme where we have the frequency droop that relates active power with the variation of the frequency in the system and the phase angle to provide for the PWM signal can be easily obtained by integrating the angle is the uh, the frequency produced by the virtual synchronous machine. The voltage droop relates the voltage amplitude reference with the reactive power, where using synchronous reference frame, we have that VQ is equal to zero. So as I told you guys, the, uh, this is a directly application where the output of the control is straightly given to the PWM signals of the converter. So here we propose the adaptive virtual inertia, where this is based on an equation which deals with the frequency variation and the frequency Rukoff by using a term which is a positive gain, Km. So here, considering the frequency variation and frequency Rukoff, we can see the behavior of the desired time varying inertia coefficient. So let's see here. When I have same signals for frequency variation and frequency Rukoff, the system is in an acceleration process where we should increase the inertia to avoid the frequency deviation. And then we have, when we have different signs for frequency variation and frequency Rukoff, we are in a deceleration process where we should decrease the inertia to read faster the new equilibrium point of the frequency. So by providing this behavior to the inertia coefficient, we have proposed a time varying inertia coefficient, which will be used in the swing equation of the system. Now we have that the Inertia coefficient is a state variable. So we need to provide the stability analysis for this approach. Here, we can rewrite the equation, uh, rewrite the equation of the swing equation of the system, considering the delta angle, which is the power angle difference between the diesel generator and the VSC converter. So by writing the equation like this and multiplying this equation by omega tilde and integrating this equation from an equilibrium point, we may result in the Lyapunov function candidate, which is the energy function of the system. So to investigate the stability of the system, we may compute the time derivative of the Lyapunov function, which is given by the energy function of the partial derivative of the energy function. So considering the time varying inertia coefficient, we may result with the uh, Lyapunov function derivative, 
where we can see that inside a given region where the frequency deviation is limited and also the angle delta is limited, and by choosing the proper uh, gain of Km, we can have a Lyapunov a negative definite, a semi negative definite function. We're calling up, uh, calling up LaSalle theorem. We can conclude that the system is asymptotically stable inside a given region. And in this region, uh, it's an invariant set where uh, the equilibrium points are given by this invariant set. So we have a negative semi definite Lyapunov, Lyapunov function derivative, which assures that this system is asymptotically stable. So given the simulation results, we have that the active power control is well provided and the reactive, pro, uh, reactive power control has some small steady state error. And these errors are given by the droop characteristic. Also, hey, sorry the, for interrupting, just to let you know that you have 10 minutes, okay? Okay. So also the voltage are controlled here and the angular speed is controlled such that in the transients of frequency, we have that the inertia coefficient is varying, okay? So comparing this proposed control with the traditional techniques, which are the droop controller and the IDQ control, we see that uh, the frequency has a smaller frequency nadir and a better response in, uh, concerning frequency variations. And the droop control and the IDQ control cannot provide the inertial support, as you can see in this case. Also, to understand the influence of the Km coefficient, we uh, simulate different values for Km coefficient, where we can see that when we increase the gain, the frequency uh, has smaller deviations of frequency, but also has a slower convergence. Therefore, we may have a trade-off between uh, the speed of convergence and the overshoots, which will provide the desired dynamics for frequency. Last, we have the isolated operation, which means that the diesel uh, generator of the grid is disconnected, so only the power converter is providing power to the load of the grid. And here we can adapt the swing equation of the system by considering the frequency of the virtual synchronous machine and the frequency reference. So this is now the frequency of the grid. And by using the droop control, we can result in the simulations where we have small steady state errors for the voltage and for, 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 for frequ frequency. And then we can insert integral terms from a second, secondary control where we eliminate the state, state, state errors, where we have the, a good behavior of voltage and frequency. So the general conclusions are, we know that the electrical grid are, are in a modernization process. We have the insertion of uh, renewables, which brings uh, many impacts to the system related to voltage and, uh, voltage and power fluctuations. We have power electronic deficits, which reduces the inertia of the system and also may bring poor re inertial response to the power system. And also the constant growth in the low demand and the access of electricity of poor communities has bring new impacts to the grid. And we may deal with that and in this thesis, we have proposed some solutions considering the microgrid contest where we assure power flow balance and voltage stability on the grid. We can reduce the influence of the disturbance in the grid by proposing a nonlinear control technique, which improve the uh, stability margins of the grid and may bring a better operation to the grid and also we re reduce the impacts of power electronic by considering the reduction of inertia where we use a virtual inertia approach. 
So with that, we can provide ancillary services for a weak grid based on a DC microgrid. So the specific conclusions are, we designed a low-level distributed nonlinear control where uh, each deficit of the system can operate correctly. We solve the no minimum phase problem of power converters by introducing a control time scale separation where the singular perturbation condition is created. We were able to integrate regenerative braking in a proper way such that we can control the burst of power in the system and considering the stability of the system. A rigorous stability analysis is carried out for the microgrid, including all interconnect deficits in the system where input to state stability is obtained. The virtual inertia concept is applied for power converters where an adaptive, virt adaptive virtual inertia is provided such that we can uh, provide power sharing between uh, different generators and provide the inertial support. So we improve the stability of the frequency and provide also voltage support to this grid. A stability analysis is also conducted for the virtual inertia approach where we can see that the system is asymptotically stable for power converter application and the AC microgrids and weak grids can have power converters such that we improve the operation of these kind of systems. Last, we have the further results, which, which are not bring it in, in the thesis document, but we insert the inner voltage and current control loops and also a virtual impedance such that we improved the performance of control for this for the microgrid. So here, by the voltage and current control loops, they are designed via the control-induced time scale separation, also creating the singular perturbation condition. And in this case, the tuning of the controller parameters are much simpler than the linear control. And the virtual impedance can improve the system controllability, creating a XR ratio conventional to power systems. So in this scheme, we can explicitly include the protection and the saturations of the system. And as we can see, the virtual inertia has a good ability to operate in island mode operation with no need of, need of PLL. So this is the, gener the general scheme of the control proposed. And here we have some simulations, which gives the results in voltage and frequency. So these are the last results where we just submitted a journal paper. So the thesis outcomes, we have two published journal papers and the last one concerning the last results were published in a IEEE transaction or smart grids, we have one book chapter and also five international conference papers. So guys, that's it. I would like to thank you everybody for hearing me. Uh, thank you for, for everything. I'm now open for questions. Thank you. Okay, Felipe. You... You still have some time, about a minute to go, but it's okay. Congratulations on your presentation. Uh, at this time, the guests we have here are still welcome. They may stay in the room. And according to the instructions I had, I think we should go to both people that made the report on your thesis and gave you the Red sign to go ahead. So we go to Dr. Didier first and then Dr. Glauco. Dr. Didier, please feel free to address your questions. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, first of all, I would like to, to thank uh, all the colleagues, uh, uh, Gilles Francoise, um, and also uh, Professor Ribeiro. Uh, for inviting me to to report on this uh, on this work 
And uh, I would like also to congratulate uh, Philippe for the presentation. I think it's it's a good presentation. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, in some sense, it uh, it gives some uh, some uh, answer to some questions I had uh, on the on the work. And um, yes, that's that's a, a nice presentation. This is not easy because, uh, as you have uh, a lot of. Uh, technical results to present it's not so so easy to to be clear in this but i think you you su succeeded in this uh, in this way so uh, first of all yes i think that the the work is uh, of course as i've mentioned in my report this is a, a work of of great topicality this is really uh, uh, something very important in the context of renewable sources and uh, new uh, challenges in uh, in controlling uh, power systems because uh, as in, in fact the the the, the problem of uh, uh, converters in uh, in reducing uh, uh, inertia is a, is a, is a central topic and uh, i think that there is a there is a interesting contribution and i consider that the work is uh, is very substantial in providing some uh, new contribution to to this uh, to this uh, issue and i'd like to emphasize that the fact that this is a, i think a successful uh, demonstration of uh, cross disciplinary uh, collaborations in, in research between electrical engineers and also automatic control uh, engineers uh, or researchers. And uh, I think it's very interesting. I would like also to point out the fact that uh, this is not so common to, to, uh, to, to see work uh, dealing with uh, nonlinear control, in, uh, especially when we consider the uh, electrical uh, uh, community electrical engineer engineering community and this is uh, very very interesting uh, because uh, i think that uh, most of the uh, of the contribution we can have uh, in the in in electrical engineering are focused on uh, linear uh, analysis linear control analysis or linear control design and I, I, I find it very uh, interesting to, to, to see that this work is, uh, is dealing with the, 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 the complexity of nonlinear behavior of, uh, of the such systems. So this is very, uh, very interesting. Um, of course, uh, as I mentioned in my, uh, in my report, there's, I, I had some, some small complaints, let's say, on, especially on the, the the fourth chapter, because I think that uh, in some in some sense the, the the chapter was not so so clear uh, for for the reader, and especially for non uh, non specialists. And think uh, there there's there was some way to for improvement for this uh, chapter. Uh, so, uh, but this is not uh, really a, a, a problem. This is only some remarks and i think that uh, this chapter should be uh, reviewed maybe uh, i don't know if uh, philippe has already uh, uh, work on this uh, on this uh, chapter but i think that it could be yes, improved it could be improved in uh, in some uh, in some uh, in the in the in the in the form and also uh, in the content in some uh, in the way of presenting the things uh, and uh, in your presentation, uh, I think, for, for instance, that uh, that was, uh, I think, a slides 13 or, 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 yeah, 13 or 14 or 15. This is these three slides uh, provide a, a better explanation than in the section for in the section uh, in the dedicated dedicated section in the in the chap in chapter 4 and i think this is a, this is a, a way to present things which is clearer and i i appreciate this uh, this presentation of this uh, three slides 13 14 okay. and, and 15 uh, and uh, i have one question regarding this uh, uh, the, the the way you how do you uh, how do you choose the this is on on slide 15 i think if you can move to this yes uh, or the 14 maybe maybe or 
the, the, yes, you mentioned the fact that you have to choose K2 alpha and K2 uh, in order to, to, to get, uh, in fact, uh, the, the, to get the, the property to, to, to be able to apply uh, the singular perturbation approach. Uh, do you have results on the condition you need uh, on the placement? of the the choose the cho the choice of the the key the, the 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 gains in order to get the proper uh, closed loop poles in order to get this uh, this property of singular perturbations uh, do you have okay. uh, some results on this um here it was uh, a straightforward application from uh, a given uh Time response for voltage and current. So I mm -hmm. provide like that the current should have first a uh, hundred milliseconds of time response and the current uh, ten times uh, millisec ten milliseconds of, mm -hmm. of, of yeah. control response. So by choosing first the gains, I in simulations I was trying to see which are the gains that work in okay. this provision. So yeah, yeah. Uh, mathematically speaking, we have the epsilon, but in simulations, I try to build a scheme such that I was able to see this uh, scale separation. Okay, so you tune it by experiment, by simulation, in fact. Yes. The way you yes. get the, the result. Okay, thank you. And uh, also, so, um, I have uh, also, so I think that the section four, two, three was, was very uh, difficult to understand. I think that you could uh, try to review this section by yes. uh, introducing what you've said in the in this slide, in the, 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 yes. the slide. And I think it could be better uh, understandable for, for, for the reader. Uh, I agree I think, with you. Uh, and yeah, I yeah, yeah. already provided the explanation in the yeah, yeah. new version of the because thesis. it's yeah it's clearer uh, like uh, like this and yes. uh, also so you have also many mistakes or vocabulary or the editorial mistakes but you can easily i think uh, correct them please okay. uh, i think that you should re re review this uh, again this uh, chapter yeah. and to 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 proofread this chapter uh, in order to to uh, to eliminate uh, the, the the small uh, mistakes or clumsinesses, let's say, and uh, that's not a, 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 a too 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 complicated job. And uh, also, uh, in sometimes in the derivation of stability results, our analysis, I think there are, there are some shortcuts and some uh, yeah. So there's some way also to give maybe to provide maybe in the appendix because in the I think it's not easy to it's not a good thing also to to develop things in the in the chapter but uh, you can also uh, uh, provide more details on on the on the conclusion on the on the stability sometimes and okay. uh, it's a little bit uh, quick, <laughs> let's say, in some in some uh, in some uh, in some parts. Uh, of course, um, uh, yes, yeah, it would be also interesting. I think be, because you you are talking, for instance, in the document in the, the manuscript, if we look at page uh, one hundred and twenty six, for instance, you you talk about uh, practical regions of attraction. Uh, it would be, I think it could be uh, uh, interesting to, uh, uh, to, to compare the, 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 the regions of, act, of attraction you get uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, when you compare to, to other uh, solutions. And uh, yeah. it could be interesting also to, to provide some more information of that kind. Okay. okay. Uh, I have also a question because you you you've made the choice. I think from the beginning, you you focused on the linear on feedback linearizations. Yes. So, uh, why didn't you explore 
other techniques. You explore also uh, backsteppings. I, 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 I agree. You used also singular perturbation. But yes. we can imagine, and there are some results uh, for converters such as book book uh, or boost converter there are some re uh, some reasons using for instance passivity or poamidonian yes. techniques because yes. in that kind you 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 you've got results uh, maybe which could be less conservative in some sense because you are not to deal necessarily with uh, zero dynamics for instance yes I, I, is it I, a, sh a choice what is the, the motivation for not using, uh, to try to, to implement also these, uh, these techniques? Because there are some results on the... Yes. So I, I, I think it was a choice because first, we would like to compare also with passive techniques and mm -hmm. with adaptive techniques. Uh, yes. But we were not able to have time to build this uh, comparison with other control laws, but I understand that the passive provides a better uh, comparison of the physical system analysis of power yeah. converters yeah, and yeah, power yeah. system in general with yeah, uh, yeah. the model. So uh, we we started with the nonlinear control based on uh, feedback linearization and backstepping because we want to linearize the dynamics of the system, of the microgrid, mm -hmm. such that mm -hmm. the analysis uh, for high, higher orders uh, control uh, con uh, controllers like the secondary and the tertiary control can look at the microgrid as a linear, uh, as a linear system. So when we, in the future, we are building the secondary controllers and mm -hmm. the, the tertiary controllers, we are considering a linear system uh, as a result. So that's why we started uh, by proposing feedback linearization and uh, backstepping. And also because we, uh, we have good uh, simulation results with that better than the linear ones. So mm -hmm. that's why we first choosing it. And then we, we really would you like to do comparisons mainly with passive and adaptive control, but we decided to move on in the AC part of the microgrid and okay. mm -hmm. uh, we starting to produce some results concerning the virtual inertia approach. So I didn't have enough time to, to provide mm -hmm. these comparisons during the, te during the thesis. On the other end, yes, uh, the, 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 maybe the, uh, in some sense, the uh, linearization, because you have only, uh, you have very uh, small or relative degree, in fact, because you, you, you've got yes. one uh, relative degree once in, in, most, the, in, the, in most of the cases. Most of the time. And yes. uh, so uh, you, you've got uh, uh, zero dynamics, which are not, uh, of course, from the uh, uh, from the viewpoint of input uh, output behavior, this is okay because you've got a, in fact uh, linear behavior because you you can place poles and this is a but in some sense you are also limited by the zero dynamics and by the some constraints and you have local mm -hmm. results also in some sense so this yes, is. I uh, agree. Mm. This is, uh, this is, but this is an improvement. I'm, to my point of view, I, uh, I, I think it's, it's an improvement uh, if, com if compared to, if we compare to uh, purely linear uh, system, control system design, I think, I think so this is my, uh, my, my point of view. Yes. So this is a good thing. Um, I have also uh, a question in the, in your, um, in your manuscript, you said uh, somewhere I don't, in the chapter four, uh, you, you discuss the tuning of PID. You said, okay, the PID, uh, uh, but you don't describe at all the, the way you, 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 you tune the, your PID. What, what kind of tuning you, did you use for, for the PID? And uh, because it's a, it's a complicated problem to compare with PID, uh, to compare 
because yes. uh, if we change if we tune the PID differently we get we can get also uh, other results can you tell yes. me a little bit more about the procedure you used yes yeah, so uh, the microgrid was building by inserting the API controllers and we also provide the gains by experimentation in simulations and mm -hmm. and there we the, the the comparison is not only in the behavior uh, the dynamical behavior of the API is also mm -hmm. that when you establish a, a tuning for the PI controller and you also provide the tuning for the nonlinear control, when you insert different uh, perturbations in the system, that's the case where we know, we can see that the, the PI is limited, is not good enough because depending on this, the perturbations, I can, I, I, can mm -hmm. I, I may have unstable results. And then I need to readjust the PI gains to provide the stabilization of that uh, perturbation. But when I when I simulating again the system by inserting parametric errors, for example, again, mm -hmm. the PI is unstable. So that's the main comparison that we have to establish is that the nonlinear control works in a wider operation region, while the PI just working in a in a equilibrium point region, in a mm -hmm. in a point of operation. So mm -hmm. when I goes out of this operating point, the linear is unstable. And concerning the control gains, they are also uh, built by in, in simulation and environment, but I should provide the how I I designed the linear gains in the thesis and I didn't present that. So mm -hmm. I, I, I should also insert the 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 uh, control law of the linear yeah, controller. Yeah, in, in order to be able to compare. Uh, I, I agree with you on the fact that uh, of course when you use PID uh, you 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 have some strong limitation with respect to operating points. In fact, uh, yes. this is may, maybe this is the 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 central point to to yes. emphasize. In fact, in, in this uh, in this case. Okay, so I have also uh, maybe some uh, question uh, regarding your presentation. And uh, uh, can you uh, go to slide thirty four thirty thirty four? And uh, yes, this one, uh, yeah. Uh, this is about the the model you use for the 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 grid for the AC grid. Yes. Um, um, when you connect the, your your micro grids to to AC grid, you, you use uh, in fact uh, a model of the uh, uh, SMIB model or something like this, a simplified model. Uh, for for the for the bus uh, for the AC part uh, this AC is the power uh, system this this is the average model of yeah. the VSC converter so yeah. here mm -hmm. uh, I consider uh, I, I don't consider the the switching the of the, yeah the, I don't consider the switching of the power converter and I consider yeah. Yeah. It IMD and IMQ as a as a modulation e index, which is okay. given yeah. um, between this is zero an average and model. one. Yeah. Yes, it's mm -hmm. an average model. OK. Yes. And when you, you consider connection to um, AC power system, a, uh, uh, an AC power system, uh, do you have also maybe, uh, because in your, 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 your goal is also to be connected to a, an AC system, huh? I, uh, yes, you, you agree. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of model do you use for the uh, for representing the uh, the AC power systems? Do you use uh, uh, so uh, here yeah? we we are presenting uh, the grid as mm -hmm. the the dynamic of the grid is a volt as a capacitor voltage. So okay. when you are modeling a strong grid, you use uh, the the voltage as a voltage source, so it's not yes. a, a state variable. And then we are modeling a weak grid, 
a, a capacitor voltage is used as the model of the, the yes liquid. i understand okay that's clear so that's it. Uh, uh, do you think that if you connect uh, the, 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 the microgrid to a, a strong grid, uh, what would be the, uh, the impact on, on, your, uh, on your control system, uh, in some sense, on your distributed control uh, system? Do you think that uh, uh, it could uh, impact the system? You could have uh, some problems with, uh, with stability or something like this? What do you think about this? when i connect the the dc side with a strong yeah. grid yeah yeah okay yes when i have a strong grid the the control target is different i'm not yeah. controlling frequency or voltage i'm controlling mm -hmm. the cur the current injection in the injection power in the network in the power system yes yeah. so the the output control are the idu and iq uh cur mm -hmm. currents so yes. with that, I can also provide ancillary services, but based mm -hmm. on a, a current source, where the, mm -hmm. the power converter is seen as a current source, not as a voltage source anymore. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the control targets are different, but also I can provide in a different way uh, a reference for active and reactive power to the grid. And in a weak grid, I need to support frequency and voltage. Frequency yeah. and voltage. Yeah, yes. I agree. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can move to slide 37. 37. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and a question about uh, your VSM phase angle. Because you said that you can, int if I understand well, I'm not sure, but. Uh, you you integrate the, uh, the 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 omega VSM is it right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so what is your reference for the delta? Because if you integrate, you 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 get something which is uh, uh, okay. You go, you 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 have an unknown because you have the 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 reference of the the angle which is not uh, which is not given in this case. Am I? Yes. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. So I have you... yes, I, I have hmm? two variables here actually. Yeah. One is the delta, and mm -hmm. delta is the difference angle between the delta from the grid and the delta produced by the virtual synchronous machine. So okay. as in the as in the swing equation, here I have omega VSM minus yes, okay. omega grid. I can use this omega here to be integrated such that I can okay. use the angle phase to provide in the in the PWM uh, signal. So mm -hmm. to pro to provide the PWM signal, I need two things, which is the uh, the amplitude of voltage and yes. the phase angle. And the phase. So yeah. yes. So. The, the amplitude is given by the droop controller mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. phase angle are given by the droop controller but using the single equation of the system and so in the you, single equation okay. i can have this variable here where i can mm -hmm. insert in the pwm okay okay and um on slide 39, maybe you have a question about the choice of key M, the, the gain, when you yes. use 39, is it? Uh, yeah. Oh, 30, yeah, 38, so I don't remember. Yes. Yeah, not, there is a, a condition, you said yeah, there is a condition on, on the derivative of H with respect to time, which has to be bounded by, maybe it's in the next next slide. I don't yes. Know and yes. uh, how do you uh, do you have results to to how do you choose uh, how do you compute the, the key m or do you how do you choose the key m in this case so, yes uh here actually we we can see that yeah uh, this is in on this uh, yes this uh i can choose km to be big enough uh, when I'm comparing this value here, of yeah. the, the dumping factor, when mm -hmm. I go to the 
other side of the equation, I can have a value that is is the size uh, of the. So here I have to assure that this is negative, right? Yeah, this yeah, yeah. So I can use this, and by computing the the conventional values for dp and mm -hmm. uh, the frequency variation maximum, I can compute a, a, the gain km based on the, the dumping factor and the inertia variation. So we, with these two equations, I can use conventional parameters and mm -hmm. provide a, a, a size of the gain. And again, I can improve this gain by uh, simulations and see by, by simulation again. Uh, this is yes. by simulation. Okay, yes. so, thank you. That is uh, because I don't see any uh, analytical results. In fact, for for that, huh? it's mm -hmm. uh, it could be complicated. I think. Um, yes. Okay. Um, you also mentioned uh, on, uh, and this is, it would be one of my final question huh, or remarks in slide uh, forty-seven. You, you talk about system controllability. Is it controllability or uh, maybe, uh, yes, the virtual indoor conclusions, further results. Uh, the yeah. virtual impedance is applied to improve system controllability. Is it really uh, system controllability? What is uh, exactly uh, what you mentioned here? System yes. controllability in the sense of automatic control? What is... Uh, no, it, it's in the sense of... Uh... What, what happens here? When uh, this mm -hmm. impedance of the grid yeah, here, yeah, yes. in microgrids, they are reduced. So yes. the relation between X and R I, are much smaller. So what happens? Mm -hmm. I have um, a system which is more uh, resistive than inductive. Yes, so, I agree. Uh, the system cannot be I cannot control the system uh, in in a proper way depending on the perturbations of the of the system. So let me explain better. Uh, yeah, when yeah. I have a reduced uh, XR parameter, uh, when I provide, for example, the droop control, I cannot mm -hmm. have a, a a a a large region where I can control the reactive power and the active power because when I have a, a low relation of X and R, uh, I cannot split uh, the the terms frequency and to control active power and uh, voltage to control the reactive power, which means that the mm -hmm. active power injection will also influence the voltage amplitude. Okay. And the reactive var power variation will also influence the frequency. So when I create a high relation mm -hmm. of XR, mm -hmm. which means that the system is, right. is more, have a, a higher impedance, I can make this... Uh, Separation where you can uh, decouple the, the things. Decouple, yes, that's the word that uh, I was looking for. I can mm -hmm. decouple active power with frequency and reactive power with yeah. uh, voltage. So that's why I can improve the control controllability of the system because I can work in a wider uh, region of operation for yeah. reactive yeah. power and active power. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, and uh, uh, again, uh, congratulations for the for the work and uh, and the presentation. I appreciate it, and uh, and that's all for me um, for the question and uh, remarks. Thank you, Didier. I I really appreciate your uh, the review that you provide to the thesis document. That was for a great improvement of the thesis document, and I really appreciate you to be so detailed in everything. Thank you. Thank you a lot. You're Thank welcome. you, Dr. Didier. Thank you very much. Before giving Glauk the opportunity to address his questions, I invite my colleagues to realize that he's paying a tribute to Paris in his background. So, Glauco, you may now go ahead, please. 
Yeah, that was a good coincidence with my background. <laughs> was not <laughs> this was not on purpose. Thank you, my friend. My thank you, my old friend. For those of you that don't know, Zambroni, the president of this uh, this defense, is a very old friend. Uh, I'm glad you know, to be led by him today. And also, I would like to to thank. Uh, Felipe uh, and the TZ directors, uh, Professor Lamina B. Lagarric and Professor Paulo Ribeiro, and, uh, and the TZ advisor, Professor June, which I, I had the privilege to visit last uh, January, uh, the same day that uh, Paris announced the first coronavirus case. Uh, after that, uh, the world uh, turned upside down, and uh, yeah. we, we hope that uh, all of us are uh, in good shape in our families. Also, I would like to say hello to uh, my colleagues here from UNIFE. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, as I was a reporter, uh, I, I already sent my most of my questions to Felipe in advance. Uh, I will try to keep on with uh, the questions I already raised in the report, but I will, I will add some uh, questions that uh, I was, uh, that uh, came to my mind uh, seeing Felipe's presentation, which was a good presentation, Felipe. Congratulations for the presentation. Thank you. Um, the thesis uh, uh, has, as Professor DDS said, is a cross-disciplinary thesis, which involves power systems, power electronics, and control theory. And mm -hmm. in, control th in control theory, you touch at least uh, three or four subjects, like feedback, linearization and backstepping, singular perturbation, Lyapunov theory. And uh, you show a good erudition in, in all those uh, uh, disciplines. Of okay. course, of course, yeah, I, I'm not expect that you are uh, expert in all of this. It is impossible to be expert in all of this, but you, I think you could put together all those subjects, which are not easy to put together and uh, came up with uh, uh, a thesis that I, uh, as you, you can, as was written in my report, I think it will give you a doctor degree. Okay. Uh, so let me uh, start with the, the, the application, because uh, uh, the application is, uh, is very new for me, because uh, as I said, uh, uh, the Brazilian uh, train sector is very way behind the European sector. So all, all applications that come on this uh, subject is, is brand new for me, at least. Uh, yes. And, uh, and I, I, I like very much the idea of uh, the energy recovery, yes. the, the burst energy recovery. Yes. So uh, my question for you is how this application would scale. When I, in, uh, when I say scale, I mean uh, if you could increase that in megawatts in, in, yes. in, in, in terms that uh, the, the train could also be accelerated by the microgrid. So this yes. is my, my, my first question. And the second question is how uh this microgrid would uh, 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 live with other microgrids like this uh, making uh, networks of microgrids i know that my friend zambroni is working this so uh two two points how would you scale and how we will live with other microgrids okay so first uh the microgrid here is sized according to the, the model of the system. So 
uh, to, to size the supercapacitor, we need to understand which is the higher power variation in the system, such that the supercapacitor can uh, provide, can inject or absorb power, this power variation, this power variation amount, because the, his target is to provide the stability of the DC bus. And the battery is sized based on the, uh, such that we, we can provide power during the whole day for a load or to supply the other deficits of the system. So uh, all of these, and, and, and third, the PV system is sized also according to the DC load demand because uh, they have to integrate, they, they have to supply the, the, the load during the whole day. So by sizing each device of the system, we can consider the target of each dev device and propose the size of this deficit. So to include the train braking uh, as uh, to, to drive the motor of the train braking, we need to increase the generation of the system because the energy from the train, it's like as, let, let me show you a better figure. So we spend, for example, 23.7 kilowatts plus for two uh, drive the train, and then we just get back 10 kilowatts hour. So we need to provide a generation that is able to provide the, this amount of energy. So here, to include the acceleration process in the train braking, in the, in the train system, we should increase the PV system and the battery such that we can provide this power to the grid because we are already dealing with power, but the energy of the system must be resized according to the values of the battery uh, not values and the PV. So in the thesis, I present a, a, a equation where we can see that uh, the battery size depends on an integral, which is given by the power variation in the system. So we may include uh, in that integral the, the size of the train, the, the power demanded by the train. And by doing these two resizing, let's say, I can, I can include the train uh, acceleration process also. And concerning to interconnect microgrids, we may, I'm thinking now here, we may interconnect the microgrids via a via voltage source converter. Maybe we can uh, interconnect via a, 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 a double feed voltage source converter where we have a, a DC bus here and we can provide ancillary services also for other grids based on this connection here. But the DC bus of the grid must be able to provide these services for interconnected systems. So in connected microgrids, each microgrid will provide uh, the stability of itself, but the connection can improve via a voltage source converter, for example, can improve the frequency and the voltage support of other grids or in moments where we have uh, a struggle operation of other grids, we can use the available power here to provide correctly by using, I, I think the same control strategies for virtual inertia to insert power, the needed power in other grids by using a, a synchronous machine behavior as the virtual inertia approach can emulate. So I hope I, I answer your question. If not, you can we can keep discussing about it. No, it's okay. But uh, I, I, it raises another question, which is about the number of trains 
here you talk about uh, uh, only one train, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, is, this is, will be always the case. Your microgrid will be for one train or this? A system of trains, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, this is... Sorry, this sorry, is... sorry for being asking about the application. No, no, no. That, 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 that's nice. It's very brand new for Brazilians. Y yes. So if we think about the train system as a whole, as a lot of operating train system, nowadays they already use uh, uh, the time of... They, they, they have already a strategy to uh, reduce the impacts of the, the train braking. Like when a train is accelerating, the other is decelerating such that the injected power by one train is going to the other train. But that is not enough to provide uh, the regulation of the voltage because the, the train are supplied by DC uh, voltage. So they need the power converters. And in the system, we can see that the power converters are suffering for uh, oscillations in voltage. So when we consider a, a, a system of trains, uh, we need to control exactly the, the accelerating process with the decelerating, but also uh, we have to consider in the, the generation system that will provide the, the, the power for this system. So when we are considering that, we have a, a much higher power demand and we may use other system, other generation systems like uh, nuclear power or others, other high, uh, large uh, power generators. Not only a solar panel like I proposed in, in this microgrid. So we need something very large to, to provide the power demand for a train system. That's something very, uh, strong, but the train braking can improve the efficiency of the system. And I think when we can regulate the voltage of, of the train system, we also can improve the efficiency of the system. So if we increase the size of this microgrid and uh, give us a large scale, we, we, we can also uh, consider the whole train system and uh, provide the power from a, a larger power source. Okay, good. Good to know a little bit more about trains. Yes. Uh, okay, uh, I always like to ask for PhD candidates um, if they could pinpoint the most innovative part of the thesis in their views. So, okay. uh, because uh, 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 this was one of my criticism in your uh, in the report, that uh, on page 14, you put a lot of uh, contributions of the thesis, and uh, uh, sometimes less is more. So I would ask you if you could uh, pinpoint the most innovative part of your thesis. So, I should point out uh, the main two aspects for me is uh, the proposed control strategy, the nonlinear proposed uh, strategy, where I can, I can using uh, a mathematical proof, I can propose a, a control strategy to control the whole system considering the, the microgrid as a whole power system and not as an each deficit. So that's, for me, the first main contribution where I include the, the regenerative braking of the train. So the design of this nonlinear control, considering this stability aspects of the grid as a whole, for me, is the first point. And the second point is the... Uh, adaptive virtual inertia approach, where in the stability analysis, we provide a formal way 
to to assure the stability of the system. So there are other works that provide a, a virtual inertia approach, which has an adaptive inertia coefficient. But in this work, I think we have proposed a, a formal way where the a rigorous stability analysis on on this approach on the virtual inertia is carried out. So for me, that that is the two main contributions of the thesis. Yeah, which is uh, expressed in chapter four and chapter five of your thesis, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I like uh, both uh, ideas. Uh, uh, I also suspect that uh, the adaptive inertia is not uh, something that came from you. I, there is other other papers. Yes. Uh, uh, I think you you have your uh, own, own own view on that. Yes. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, I feel I felt also that probably you would need more uh, simulations on that, even though you showed some uh, good results, encouraging results. But I would I would uh, uh, say that in your career you could go further on that because uh, I think uh, it's still not complete in uh, that part. Yes, I agree. And also uh, concerning the dumping term of the, the the system, which is another coefficient, we also can work on a adaptive term for that because as these parameters are not from a physical sense anymore, it's not a real synchronous machine, we can work on that and uh, improve the the operation of the system by, by that parameters. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you agree with me, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, in, in ter, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me let me just go through a little bit my my report. Uh, let me read some parts about the text. Uh, overall, the thesis is well written with a good use of the English language. But of course, one can obviously find the grammatical and typos errors that, mm -hmm. uh, as Professor Didier, Didier said, with another careful reading, you find these typos. And uh, I'm not sure if you can still uh, change your document. Some places yes, that can. you can, right? Because some places yes. that I have been, uh, the candidate cannot touch in the, in the document, but okay. If you if you can do that, uh, yes. it's good for you because uh, if you can get a typo free document, uh, it's good for you. Yes, uh, I've been doing that since I received the R report, and from this year also, I've been working to improve the the document of the thesis concerning all yours. Uh, comments and suggestions. I've have, been working on that. Have you change X over L by X over R? Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, I, I have changed it. Because I... It was I my mistake. I noticed that in your presentation there was X over R. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, this is uh, more... Uh, my anxiety, you express my anxiety publicly here. I think it's a good uh, opportunity about these definitions of microgrids, right? Uh, I put in my report, I think this is not very well defined and I would like to hear from you. What do you think about the definitions of microgrid? Because for me, there are many microgrids. Uh, yes. You, you presented one. Uh, you, yes. you, were, you were not clear when you defined it in chapter two, but then you start talking about the your problem. Then you define it well. What kind of microgrid you were dealing with? Yes. So I would like to hear from you. Yes, that that's a, tr a tricky question. Let's say because the definition of microgrids are are very wide. Let's say 
uh, we, we can have many kinds of microgrid. But in, in my sense, a microgrid is a system where we have gen generators and energy source, which is able to provide by itself a proper power supply for a local load. So we must to uh, clearly define the load of the microgrid and the region of the microgrid. So if it is a distribution system and which are the generation units of the system and which are the, 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 the induction lines of the system. So for me, a microgrid is a system which is composed by generators, which correctly provide power for a local load. And in my sense, we can insert different kinds of devices which can improve the, the operation of the system as uh, storage systems or PV generations, and also systems that can uh, bring impacts to the system, to the microgrid as different kind of loads, different kind of, uh, of transportation system, which is supplied by the electrical grid. So this, for me, this is the definition. And here in the thesis, we define a DC microgrid, which is able to operate by itself. And then we provide also an AC microgrid, which is also able to operate by itself, but we improve the uh, operation of the system. And this, these both systems are composed a, a, a larger microgrid, which is an ACDC microgrid, because they have the generation units and the local loads to be supplied, and they can attain the stability of the system by itself. So when I co connect the uh, the main grid with uh, with the microgrid, uh, the microgrid changes changes the uh, the control target because the stability is given by the strong grid. But when I operate operating without this main grid, uh, the the control strategy is to attain the stability on the grid. So even when I'm connected in this case with the main grid, the stability of the DC bus is assured by itself, by the DC bus, by the supercapacitor, and not from the main grid. So that's why I consider that a microgrid, because it's a system which is able to connect and disconnect with the main grid, but it keeps the, the stability uh, with their proper control. So that's how I define the microgrid that I've been uh, using. That, that was your question, or you are considering also DC and DC and AC equipment or size or distribution systems? I, I don't know if I correctly answered that. No, I think, uh, I, I think everyone has your own, own, <laughs> own definition of microgrids. Uh, we, uh, I, I agree, uh, I, I will not uh, uh, complain about your definition. Uh, but uh, uh, it's very, it's very loose when we say only microgrids, and you don't talk more about about the microgrid def, uh, specifics because in your microgrid you consider a train. I can, uh, yes. I, I can I can have a microgrid just on the my lab, right? So uh, yes. every everything is microgrid. So the, the, the yeah. This, uh, this has to be, I think, better defined in the future. Okay, but uh, I, I, just, I just would like to, uh, to, to listen to you. Uh, in, in chapter five, four, four, uh, chapter five uh, you start talking about the, the stability definitions, right? Voltage stability, frequency. Yes. Stability. And uh, I point to you uh, a, a task force Right in the report, I don't know if you uh, we're aware about this task force mm -hmm. of 
the IEEE task force that uh, I was not. Thank you for yeah. Me. They 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 had the stability definitions paper, which was the IEEE C Gray joint joint uh, uh, paper. Yes, which was uh, I think in, in two thousand and one. I'm not sure. Which was a, a uh, about was twenty years. Yeah. Twenty years old. And then they revis revisited these definitions uh, in view of this, uh, let's say, hyperinitration of inverter based generation or not generation, but uh, resources, right? Yes. Uh, like, uh, uh, like you are using here storage, supercapacitors, and so on. And uh, so I. Uh, uh, I think you, you you could include that in your references, yes, and uh, I will. because uh, this is uh, this is something that uh, is really uh, changing the power system, the bulk power systems. Uh, all the the dynamics are changing. We are still in a in a stage that the percentage is not high usually, but uh, depends of. Uh, a disturbance in the system you can get some uh, isolated parts that uh, can get very high penetration of renewables if inverter yes. based. I'm, i don't like to say renewables because um, as we are here in brazil we use hydro which is renewable yes for many, many, for many many years also this is another thing that we should pay attention uh, it's not just renewables uh, because uh, it's inverter based generation yes uh, and uh, and dynamics are getting very different and much much more much faster uh, dynamics in the system now which is uh, touching the protection of the system uh, the stability of course and uh, we 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 still I, I i think we are still in a situation that we don't know how these things will evolve yes. uh, if you in my view uh if you are which is uh i will uh, talk about this because i will ask you uh one question from your last slides that i uh, i was confused yes. uh, and I think that uh, uh, the, the stability of the system is not uh, will not be very aff affected if uh, you use this uh, for, uh, grid grid following inverters, which yes. uh, which has been the case in the bulk power system right now. But uh, I'm not sure if we start using the grid forming as you are using here, but you are in a microgrid, you are okay. So you have all controls, you have all the information, you monitor on the whole microgrid. Uh, yes. Then probably you, 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 as you can, as you showed us, you can uh, guarantee stability. But uh, I, I'm very skeptical seeing this in the bulk power system. And then uh, the, this brings to the question of this uh, slide. Uh, I'm not. I think the slide. Uh, 47, I guess, is, is, is something that you are using. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you said that uh, you no need of PLL. Uh, yes. Here we are talking about grid forming, right? Because uh, I, uh, I, I I was confused this, if, if it is. Yes, no I, I will clarify that. Okay. Uh, so here, when you are using the swing equation, of the power system of a synchronous machine. Uh, the S, the, the swing equation is, uh, comp the, the dynamic of the single equation is the difference between the, the frequency of the grid and the frequency of the VSC. We, we will be in the same phase angle uh, through the time. So we don't need to use the PLL when we are using the single equation. Of course, in the initial uh, transients, we'll, you will have a higher trans transient because uh, the, 
they are not in the same, they are not synchronized. So after the synchronization, they keep the 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 uh, the same phase angle without need of a PLM. And here, it doesn't matter if you are using a grid forming or a grid following. The difference of the grid following and the grid forming is that when I'm use, I'm in the grid forming, I'm prov I'm I'm taking the voltage source converter as a voltage source where uh, I will control the voltage on the output in the P in the PCC of the system, and this is made locally. So even uh, if you have the grid forming here in a PCC and other uh, system here, if I have this impedance, they can locally provide the voltage regulation. But if I'm dealing with grid forming uh, system, I, I need to take care of who is uh, providing the, the frequency response to the grid, the, the isochronous control. But when I'm in group control, I can share the power by doing this approach here. So when I when I using the uh, the converter as a current model as a current source, because I have a strong grid, I can support the frequency and the voltage, but I'm not providing the references. So. In this case, now I'm, I'm just providing active and reactive power such that I can improve the frequency and the voltage response. And the strong grid is uh, has the target to keep the stability. And here, I and in this case, we have a current source voltage uh, converter where uh, I don't need to attain the stability itself. And in this approach here, as I'm in a microgrid with a weak grid, which means that this guy is not strong enough, I can use the voltage control to also keep the voltage regulated in the output of the converter. So that's the two applications. In, in this case, using the weak grid, I use the, uh, the voltage source model of the voltage of the power converter. And in a strong grid case, I can model the system, this power converter as a current source and just support the, the voltage and the frequency regulation, just support the stability of the, the system. So that's the two case that uh, I have here. And in, in my case, I'm using the voltage and the current control to be a grid forming uh, in, in a grid forming way, but also considering the grid because of the the single equation of the system that considers the let me see here. So in the swing equation, I consider also the the frequency of the grid, which is given by the diesel generator. So that's why I can use this approach, and I don't have a conflict of control between the diesel and the, the uh, power converter. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, okay, my last question, which is uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a, a new question because it was not in the report. So you have yes. to see it now. Uh, because uh, it's one, one subject that uh, I work now which is uh, the modeling of three phases, three phase modeling. And one of the things in three phase modeling that uh, uh, gets our attention is the imbalances on the three uh, phases. So I would like yes. you, I, uh, I know that's a, maybe is a tough question, but I would yes. like you to, to, what do you think yes. if you have imbalances how would all your thesis would change? So if I had, if I have an unbalanced system, first thing is PLL, the synchronous reference frame PLL 
can become a mess. So I need to improve the, uh, the synchronization of the grid considering control strategies that consider unbalanced systems. Also, uh, when I'm doing the transformation, the DQ0 the DQ transformation, I will also considering the zero current, which is the which is not zero when I have an unbalanced system. So I should also include the control law for uh, the current zero, which is the the zero term of the DQ transformation from the park transformation. So I must also include that, and maybe I also has to uh, in the in the modeling of the grid. I should insert uh, a transformer given by a, a delta a delta y transformation to avoid the harmonics of the zero sequence here, uh, because when I have an unbalanced system, I will bring with this kind of uh, perturbations. So I also I should consider the transformers of the system to be changed. And uh, mainly, I have to insert the control of the zero from the park transformation. That's what I think I should insert here when I considering uh, this balanced uh, systems, unbalanced systems. Okay, good question. Uh, and I hope that uh, you will succeed today and become a, a professor. And then you can advise your student on the subject. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, How would you uh, like to? Thank yeah. you. Uh, so I think that's all I have, Mr. President. Uh, I uh, I wish uh, uh, good luck for Philip and, and the, the remainder of the defense. And uh, once again, I I felt very honored to be invited to be a reporter. That was my first experience. Uh, with a French university. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, uh, I, I could be used for it. And I thank you. And I, I return my, my, the words for uh, Zambroni. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Dr. Glaucon. Uh, we now go to Dr. Pedro. Pedro, please, you may address your questions. Hi, Pedro. Hi, Felipe. Hi, everyone. Good morning. And good, good morning. afternoon to the ones who are in Europe. So, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, the East Director Paulo, Francois, and also you, for the invitation. I really appreciate the opportunity to participate and also to learn about a topic that I uh, really found out that is power alternatives and application of, of control of power alternatives. And also congratulations on your presentation. It was really good. Thank you. So uh, this time I'll, I'll be very brief. I think uh, we went through the pieces on the qualification the, I think we have covered all the aspects and everything. And I also saw that you have made some changes for this document. Yes. And I won't go through this again. Okay. okay. So, and also, it really proved the document, the, the suggestions that were given to you last time. Thank you. So, I have, I have some general comments and also specific ones. I'll go so through the general ones. So as the other examiners have said, the topic is very interesting as it deals with hybrid migrate grade and have, uh, let's say, advantages of both worlds and also some drawbacks that, uh, for example, the low inertia things that I believe you have tackled them in a very effective way as you have shown yes. in the results. So another comment about the topic, I think you feel helped to fill a gap between 
the power electronics community and the control community. Usually, uh, the power electronics community are concerned with efficiency, power density, some uh, interference, EMI, and they leave the control uh, to the cheapest one, also to only to ensure a minimal performance. Yes. Uh, it's not only because of that. I'll, I'll go through that later. But uh, they leave. They they don't fully explore the uh, the performance that the converters can achieve. So I think that you, you have to uh, uh, go through this thing. You can, as you showed, you you can uh, through it for the capacity of the converter to the controller, and also. Uh, we know that the the control helps to improve the system efficiency. So sometimes yes. we forget about that and try to use the simplest controller. So uh, I, I think these are things come as a bridge between two words that uh, usually work separately, but nowadays we have to let's say join the join the forces. So yes. uh, I I like that. So uh, your document is quite well written. You have some problems. It's easy to re read and to follow your thoughts. But I think yeah. some parts you may improve it, as Professor Didier uh, has said. And also because, as I said, you have people from power plants and from control that will uh, read your thesis and uh, the drop, drop the, the actually the their knowledge, the previous knowledge, their background. It's not yes. the same. So yes. I think if you improve it, if you can be more careful with the missions and give more. I know. Yeah. I, I like some physical means. If you can provide it, sometimes the math, math, mathematical theory hides the physical things. Um, yes, I, I believe if you can include that, it would be very good. Uh, the quality of viewers is quite good, actually. Uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. Now, uh, I have some specific points I'd like to discuss with you. Okay. Uh, I believe last time you may told me that they are intend to build the, and implement the, implement the smart grid. And probably using the control log you have developed. So, uh, as I'm a power electronic person and experimental, experimental person, I would like to know from you if there's something that you need to change from this controller you have designed in order to implement it in the real world, let's say practically. Do you think there, there will be some problems? What do you think? Yes, I, I think it, it may, we may deal with uh, some issues. First, it, it is that uh, as we have a nonlinear control, we may need a, a, a stronger DSP to address the controllers. So uh, the computation, I mean that the, we, we will have a a stronger effort by computing the control gains, the, con the control parameters, and include the control law in a DSP or uh, an electronic uh, uh, device as, uh, as the, the, the digital processors. So that is the first issue that uh, when compared with linear controllers, which may deal with uh, easier computation of the control strategy. And uh, the other issue, I think it's maybe uh, when we are dealing with a, a real system, we may understand that the parameters of the system are unknown or are not exactly the, the, the same as we simulated. So the, the parameterization is not uh, uh, so so uh, uh, let's say precise, and then the control, the control law here, as we have input state stability properties, we may have a stronger 
a strong uh, uh, robustness properties concerning two, two param parameters, but uh, we may also have deal with that. And we are uh, applying to the real system, we also may have to deal with the a retuning of the parameters gains of the gains of the controller because maybe they represent a, a, a different aspect because I'm dealing with uh, perturbations that were not simulated as the ripples of the switching frequency of the converters and that kind of stuff because I modeled the system as an average model. So I think the ripples and the unknown perturbations maybe maybe will appear as a problem. And also we have to think about the equipment, the real equipment. So the switching frequency must be checked as the equipment has the, 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 their own uh, switched frequency operation. So we may also deal with that if I have a uh, lower uh, switching frequency, we may deal with some problems. So I think we we have another target to accomplish when we are going to the real part of the the the, simu the simulations. Okay. Uh, so also uh, about that, I think you should provide a better explanation how you design the games because. If someone is going to, to try it, and as you said, probably it won't work the way you want. So they have to adjust the parameters. And the yes. Track. So you haven't given them how to do that. The so we, yes. at least you have to give them a clue how to, to do it. Yes, it, I, it, I... It's hard that the, uh, the things don't work as you, we want to, and then we have to make few adjustments. And I believe if you give them some, some how you give thought to, to... Yes, I agree. I, I provided, I'm providing a section talking about these parameters gains, also including the, the gains of the linear control to, this is need a better explanation. I'll also about that, I think you should uh, put some comments. Uh, I think you use the derivative of measured variables in some of your control. And the uh, power electronic guys are really afraid of derivatives because of the switching frequency and the noise and everything. So yes. I believe you should just say uh, this may cause problems. We can solve like using a computer or Yes, I, think it's I, I, I really agree with that, uh, but in this sense, uh, the controller that we are computing, we not, uh, in simulations, let's say, in simulations, I'm not taking the, the dynamics and then I pass through a derivative. I really calculate a function of the times derivative variable. So in, in this sense, I think we may reduce the, the ripple, the, the, the noise problem. And uh, also, uh, as I'm calculating this, I think we are not, I'm not so afraid to use the derivative in this case, okay? Because I, I provide in simulations, I write the, the equation of the time derivative and I'm not using a, a block to to perform the derivative of the, the the variable. So in this sense, I think I'm not in a, in a trouble, you know. Okay. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, you should uh, put this on the thesis. Okay. I didn't find it. Okay. I agree. Okay. Great. Uh, also, one other point. I, I think we talked about this before, but. I'll come back to it. Uh, you have modeled all the cables that connect the converters by a resistance. But in practice, Sorry, I didn't hear you. You have modeled, you modeled all the, the cables that connect the converters by yes. a resistance. Yeah. Yes. And that's not really the, the, 
the case. Maybe the cable is predominant inductive. You think that yeah. would be a problem because also to prove this a bit, as I, I follow this, I thought it would be, uh, be harder to include the, this phenomenon or, or the, the cable modeler. modeler uh, yes. So. Yes. I think if I include the inductance of the cables in the DC side of the grid in the interconnections, uh, I will need to remodel my old model of the microgrid because it will bring new dynamics and these dynamics will provide the influence of each other dynamics that I already, uh, I already considered. So uh, if we consider that and we have a new nonlinear model of the system and I think because I have seen that uh, as you will have a LC output filter of the out, output uh, of the converter, in the output of the converter, will we result in a LC filter because you have the output capacitor and the output impedance. So we have an LC filter. And this can improve uh, the, it can filter high frequencies perturbations. And also, we may design, I think that's what I'm thinking now. I think we can design the Lyapunov function of the whole system by considering this uh, current, which will become a, var a state variable. So maybe we, we can not provide a Lyapunov function based on these currents, but maybe I think we can. So... We can also go through this and uh, provide the stability of the system considering these dynamics. So in my uh, opinion, I think it, it, it could be maybe better. It, it will bring some problems, but maybe better in the uh, power system point of view. And also for the controllability of the system, we are inserting new dynamics that could be controlled. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you have like uh, a lot of results, several results that the, the deviation is less than dot one percent, or like the error between the, the operation point or the reference is quite small. So I think this is really, really small when sometimes when you use it in a digital signal processor, you can even cannot see it from this magnitude. I think you should give some uh, ideas about that because it's really a, a small, really small deviation. It yes. May, maybe some, some comments about that. Okay. okay. I, I have inserted some variations, some perturbations in the system in other simulations to increase, to see the, 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 re, the uh, a stronger perturbations taking place. And uh, we can see that uh, the overshoots are higher and are considerable. But even uh, when I did the simulations that get 2% of overshoots, uh, I was performing a, a, a strong perturbation to the system. I was inserting 500 amperes from uh, the train braking, and then the battery changed for 300 amperes. So compared with the size of the system, I think it, it was uh, a strong, but um, a strong variations. But in any any case, I got this. Over small overshoots, and just when I inserted really strong perturbations, that I got smaller, uh, higher overshoots, as you can see in the uh, uh, comparison between PI and nonlinear control. So I should to say that in the thesis that uh, that that small overshoots may be a problem to the DSP. Yes, I agree yeah. with you. Yes, and. Um, uh, and also because your controller is really fast. 
with repressive yes. and aggressive. And they this may cause some problems uh, during disturbance because it's really uh, aggressive. So uh, it's good. Been, yeah. we, we can see that it, it responds very fast, but uh, not all the, the fast fastest response is, is the best one. So always and, and also when you have a lot of disturbance, it it, it re responds really fast, really aggressive. It also may cause some problems, some big problems. But okay, okay, and and also re regard these results. Uh, for example, when you compare the, I think it's on slide two. You put that. Yes. So, yeah, I think it's too long. This so, this is the comparison in the AC side of the grid frequency. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you see the, the difference between the three controllers is three degrees more. Yes. Right. And if you think uh, some, uh, you want to replace this uh, the traditional controller by this one. I think the time response will not convince the traditional power system guy. Do you think? Uh, because to, to replace the, the controller, he is used to, to apply in the system. Because the if you look at, at the deviation, it's like dot zero zero six in the and the uh, voltage is less than dot zero zero five. So it's really, really small. I think you should, uh, so they, they are really comparable. Okay. Yes. You can also see some uh, oscillations that may say that uh, you have stability problems, but it, it's not true. So I, I believe you should put in a document uh, that we should choose between these controllers, maybe because of the stability. You prove that uh, this controller is stable for a wider range of operation points. Yes. So I believe it's not really clear in, in the, the document, because if you take this, these results, I would keep using the, the group or the IQ controller, right? Yes. We agree with me. It's not, it's not because of what zero zero one for chance that they are going to choose the controller. So yes, I, I so agree with you. Point, okay, the main point is you, you should uh, explain better why you wish we should go from linear to non-linear controller. People who okay. know nonlinear control, it, 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 you don't have to explain anything. But uh, as it's a document with people with different backgrounds, I believe you should uh, emphasize this point, the stability point, to encourage okay. them to, to change yes. from the traditional controllers to nonlinear ones with feedback. Yes. I, I agree with you. This, the simulation results pr provide just an example. And if you take a look just on the reduced overshoot, that's not enough. I agree with you. We are dealing with a, a, a property of stability in the nonlinear sense. And also uh, we have the robustness uh, towards uh, parametric errors. We also have uh, the perturbations of the system, the, the region of operation of the system, and maybe in simulations that's not uh, highlighted, but I, I, I should highlight this on, on the text. I said that the PI tuning is not is weak uh, for other operations regions, but I I really should talk more about the the properties of the stability of the system and how this can influence the operation of the system as a as a whole. Thanks. Uh, so to finish, as Professor Glauco 
brought it. Uh, I think uh, the unbalanced things will may pose as a, a, a great uh, problem because when yes. you have unbalanced voltages, not only on the AC side, but this uh, oscillating power are going to be reflect, reflected on the DC side. And then you have a problem there. Yeah. And I think we, maybe some other students should other other groups at this point. It's a really interesting thing. Yes, I agree. You have with to you. find a, a trade off between the DC and the AC side quite. If you have yes. a car with John DC, the AC will be uh, with a lot of uh, negative sequence current. Yes, I agree. Anyway, uh, and also in, in the last slide, I saw you say something about we don't need Excellent. DLL. Uh, the last one. The last one. Uh, you said we don't need anything uh, about DLL. I, I have some seen some works about that because when you model a model a uh, machine itself it, it is a EFL because if you connect a synchronous motor on the, the grid it will synchronize. Yes. So yeah if you also said about the the problems at the beginning and I seen some works that at the beginning the inertia is really really small so it it's uh, synchronized really fast. And then after it's synchronized, you connect it and change the image. So it's, it's just a, an idea yes, that we can work in. Yes, I, I, I agree with you because even synchronous generators, they have synchrono, synchronous equipment to uh, connect, to before connect, be synchronized with this system. I, I agree with that. But after we are synchronized, we are we can use the PLL just as a measurement of the frequency of the grid and not as a synchronization anymore. So, but every time that we need to synchronize, maybe we improve the operation of the system using the PLL. I, I agree with you. Okay, thank you, Philip. I think that's it. I had a lot of questions, but I think uh, uh, you have covered it. So okay, finally, uh, I would like to congratulate you and your supervisors for this outstanding research that, uh, in my opinion, you have a lot of contribution to several fields and also control and power electronics and power systems and uh, innovative ideas to, to, to have a doctorate degree. So thank you. Thank you. And again, thank, thank you, you very much for uh, the invitation. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you a lot. Zambroni. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pedro. So we just had the three external members of the jury. Um, June just sent me a reminder asking in order to try to keep this meeting in around three hours, but we still have the internal members. So we go first to Dr. William. Please feel free to address your questions, Dr. William. Welcome. Oh, okay, I will. Uh, do, do you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can see you. Oh, William. So I will ask three questions, but very simple questions. So I hope it will not take much time. I have one question on power systems, one in control, and one in mathematics. But my question on power systems, it's a little bit naive and shows that I am really not expert in the area. It's really about your okay. architecture. In your architecture, you used uh, you use bulk and boost uh, converters, yes, in, in that yes. figure. So my question is, would it help to have a more advanced kind of converter, like, uh, for example, a, a bidirectional uh, bulk boost uh, converter? Would it be helpful to have a, a more sophisticated, more sophisticated converter in this in this architecture of your DC grid? Yes, in fact, we have uh, more, let's say, modern uh, configurations of uh, of power converters as uh, multiple levels of uh, power converters or different 
topologies of converters that may have higher efficiency and uh, other aspects. But here we keep the conventional ones as we have the, that the dynamics of this, the, these converters are the main used are used in the in the industrial field. So um, the, the choice here is to use the conventional converters to provide the connection be between the system. But yes, we have uh, different topologies, but these are the most applied uh, configuration of power converters in power systems and mainly the, the voltage source converter. We have a multi-levels uh, voltage source converter, but even by doing by having the, that, uh, we see in papers that they can uh, use the traditional voltage source converter to model the multi-layer, uh, the multi-layer voltage source converter. So, as a standard, we choose to to use the conventional ones because they they are the most using in papers and they are already proven extensively for uh, by using linear controllers. So we can compare the proposed nonlinear control with uh, the conventional ones. So that's why we have chosen it. Okay, okay, okay. This this answers my my question. My, my next my next question on, it's about uh, a control theoretic choice you made. It's on slide fifteen. Yes. Here, here for this system, you 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 follow one approach, which is the approach of singular perturbations. And in fact, you, you want the Z dynamics to converge uh, very quickly. So my yes. question, wouldn't, wouldn't it be, be possible to do not ask that, not, not asking it to be very quick, but just asking it to be stable, that you, you can, in a stable way, track the, the reference, and use the fact that uh, these dynamics might go to, to zero, the, the, the error of these dynamics might go to zero, to, to have a cascade, cascaded approach to study this system. Yes. So if I don't have a, a fast convergence of these dynamics, I think we are not able to produce the boundary layer model. And we, without the reduced model, we keep uh, a problem in the dynamics of the, the voltage here. So I think if we don't approach with a fast uh, speed of this, the, the current subsystem, uh, we cannot uh, result with the boundary layer model. And then uh, we will have a problem to control VC2 because uh, as you can see here in VC2, uh, by, by controlling this dynamic here, uh, I will not attain the fast convergence of IL3 and this, the model, uh, that's the way, so I cannot attain the, the stability of the system. I'm here, the procedure is I'm keeping, I, uh, I'm assuring the exponential stability of the system from the reduced model to uh, can say that also the complete model is, is stable. So this is the approach. Maybe uh, if we test, uh, let's say a normal speed of convergence for Z and see what happens with uh, VC2, it, it, it may be also stable, but I not obtain the reduced model, so I cannot, from singular perturbation analysis, say, oh, the, the, the reduced system is stable and then the original system is stable. So by not using the singular perturbation analysis, uh, we may have to prove in another sense uh, okay. the stability of the system. And I, I don't know if we could do that. 
So I, I understand that this, the, the controller you use in the first part is really needs this singular perturbation. So do not yes. rely, if you don't want to rely on the singular perturbation, this would probably imply designing another controller, if I yes. understand. Yes. And my, my, my last question is on slide 26 and 27. I don't remember which one. Yes, this one, the, the previous one, 26, in fact. Yeah, when, when I see this slide, it really, it really looks to me like a, a consensus problem. Because you have a, a variable, VDC, and this variable is influenced by all other uh, voltages. Yes. So in, in your approach, you are really strict about uh, the, the control on each voltage. You want each voltage to follow exactly its prescribed reference. Yes. So my question if it would is if it would be possible to relax this uh, this need of of going very quickly and very precisely to a, a prescribed voltage and just formulate this stability of the DC bus as a consensus problem and and design the different uh, resistances and and the, the, the different control laws in such a way that the stability comes from a consensus uh, argument and not from a Lyapunov function argument. Uh, that is, if instead of wanting a precise equilibrium, if it would not be possible to have an equilibrium that you will not choose, but uh, that will correspond to a, a consensus of the system. Well, what do you okay. think about that? Yes, I think we, we may do that, but we also have a problem here. Let, let's, let me show you. Because, except in, uh, uh, with the exception of uh, the, the supercapacitor system, which is where we are controlling vo the output voltage of the grid, the other voltages here are not controlled, but you are precisely controlling current IL6, IL9, the input voltages of the train, but that one, you're not con the, the, the output voltage you are not controlling. So if you uh, insert a high variation of current here, because of this resistance, you, you can have a, a, great, a, a, a large variation of voltage in these interconnection systems. And this will influence this voltage here. So you, we, with this approach, we can say that uh, the variation of the voltage here is not a whole that is not so uh, unlimited. It's not just, it, it cannot go everywhere. I have bound it in a region, you know, because this is, can be well controlled, the current can be well controlled, but will produce a voltage here that is so high that the, even having a control to balance this uh, DC bus, as this variation is very high, I cannot attain the stability of the, the DC bus in a consensus way, because I'm letting these guys to, to go everywhere. And by considering the, these interconnections, the voltage interconnections via Lyapunov function, I can precise the, how far they are from the equilibrium point and bring it back to the, the equilibrium. But in a consensus, I can, I can say that this guy has a, a maximum limitation because it will vary uh, according to the, the limits of the battery. And also this guy is limited because the PV generation has a power limit to inject in the grid. So in, in this way, by considering this, uh, we can do this consensus in the DC uh, voltage, but when we are using the output voltage in the Lyapunov function, we better precise this variation and we consider these uh, perturbations, these variations in the system. So we have, I, I think I, we have a stronger 
a control law considering these these variations okay okay so th thank you very much for your very clear presentation and for the answers to the, the questions and i will uh, give the other members of the jury ask you some other question thank you thank you thank, thank you very you. much dr william we now give the who professor bonato dr bonato please feel free to address your questions here welcome thank you very much well uh, thank you Felipe. thank you zambroni didier glauco william pedro uh francois Gilnei e Paulo. É, in my point of view, Felipe has evolved a very, very good, uh, has developed a very, very good work. And I was looking into his uh, curriculum from our uh, Lattice platform. He graduated from Federal Vissosa. He have done some work on passivity and also uh, done some scientific initiation with power converters. At UNIFE, in his master, he worked with uh, energy storage devices for photovoltaic systems. At the University of Paris Saclay, under the guidance of uh, he, uh, his supervisor, June A. And, um, uh, That's I, nice. I think he, he demonstrated clearly that he was able to integrate in the design a, a multidisciplinary approach. He considered a design, modeling, control, stability, simulation and I the the main contribution of uh, his thesis is written in his uh, thesis title my only contribution would be to make it clear and I, I uh, sorry I, I send the suggestion ahead of time <laughs> and sorry uh, professor uh, William uh, the suggestion I have sent is that uh, you could include as a title of your thesis, nonlinear control and stability analysis of ACDC microgrid, including renewables, hybrid energy storage systems, regenerative train braking, ancillary services, and dynamic virtual inertia. Why is that? Because this is, I think, those are the main contributions he has made. For example, the the dynamic virtual inertia he demonstrated that uh, we, we can use uh, uh, power converters and a, a formulation using Lyapunov to prove that this is is possible and this has stability properties he demonstrated the separation of uh, time in in terms of control uh, time separation time scale separation and this is naturally in book and bus converters. For example, in order to control voltage, you have to control current first. That's the main philosophy of control through power electronics. Why we need to use virtual in, virtual impedance or is 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 clear because we need to control first the current in order to achieve the control of the voltage because this is more effective. So the philosophy of control is correct. So I have nothing to say more than that to congratulate uh, Felipe for his work, to congratulate you, Ney, Francois, and also I would like to mention uh, Rafaela, Felipe's uh, wife, Ulysses, yeah. Felipe's father, Ivani, Felipe's mother, Talita, Philippe's sisters and all his friends at Paris Saclay University. Uh, one last thing I would like to suggest is because one of your professors, one of your advisors, also works for Energy, would you please include in your acknowledgments uh, a, a word acknowledging the Energy 
CNPQ CAPES contribution for the development of research in the Brazilian institutions. And that's all. Thank you very much. Congratulations. For sure, I will do that. Thank you, Gonat, for your speaking. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much, Dr. Bonato. Thank you very much. And Felipe, I think yes. it's time for myself to address some questions. Uh, yes. I don't have much to say, but I do have a few comments and two or three questions here. First, okay. I have a question in page 13, when you talk about the contributions of your thesis. Um, you talk about without harming its life cycle of a battery. And you mention life cycle in so many pages of your thesis, but it's just, as far as I understand, it's just a concern. It's not the focus of your work, right? Yes. Okay, somehow I was confused here. I was driven to something else. Yes, I, I think we, we will consider that in fact, in the secondary controller, where we may design the, we, we deal with the life cycle of the battery and the supercapacitor also. Mm, but it's not a constraint, is it? I, I couldn't follow that in our formulation. You'd like to have, you'd like to have a good result about the cycle, but it's not a constraint as far as I understand. No, it's not. I didn't consider it as a constraint for the formulation of the controller, but of course, I think it should be considered from the limitation aspect of the the operation of the, 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 the battery. But I, I didn't consider it in the control strategy. I do have a question in page 22. When you say that each battery system has a maximum capacity of 3.6 kilowatts and operate in group control mode. Is it correct? The battery is in group control mode or you are talking about the converter mode? Because the converter. in general, we say that to dispatchable units, right? Yes, oh. yes. I mean the converter and we have to deal with uh, the, we are dealing with uh, a storage unit. So you can apply the control scheme for the converter of the storage unit. But I mean, the drip control, you mean? The yeah, drip I control, think... as we know, for dispatchable units, is, is, is it what you mean? Yes, I think uh, the, energy, the storage unit can be seen as a dispatchable unit, right? Mm -hmm. So in this point of view, uh, we may use also the dupe, the dupe control for uh, the storage units. Mm. Maybe, maybe, yes, I, I know what you mean. I, 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 because I have the process to, to, to charge the battery again. Yeah, so I, I don't know if I agree, to be honest, but, but it's okay. Uh, no, I understand what you mean. Yeah. I, I have to consider not only the, the storage unit, but I'm considering the converter that is linked with the storage unit plus the generation unit, which is a PV system. And in this power converter, I, I can apply the droop. But specifically in the converter of the storage unit as itself, I cannot apply because I have the process of charging and charging the battery. I know what you mean. So. I'm looking at the power converter of the system, uh, considering the, the the storage units and the PV systems, but not yeah. only the, the one system. I, I understand what you mean. Sorry, I think okay. I should correct that. Uh, in page 27, you say something that drives me to Graupa's question when he was talking about the definition of microgrids. And yes. when you go to isolated microgrids, power is no longer the focus, but energy is. In this case, you have a sentence here that says, in the microgrid case, the loads can participate actively to perform the stability of the system where the operation follows a schedule, turning off during peak periods. It's mm -hmm. not clear to me if you are talking about voltage stability 
or autonomy of the microgrids, which in this case should follow a priority of load to be supplied. In this sense, this sentence is not clear, at least to me. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I was trying to say that uh, the loads can participate as, as they can uh, turn off itself when the grid are uh, in some limits. So it's like provide load, load shedding. That's uh, what, I, what I was meaning. But it doesn't need to be the, the system itself. It could be an uh, autonomous system from home or something like this. Yeah, but what I mean by autonomy is you want to supply the priority loads as long as you can, once you have yes. this connection. So if you need to have a load shedding, that should follow a priority of loads to be supplied. That's what I meant. Yes, yes. Okay. I is it what you meant as well? Yes, I, I should reread oh, yeah. that. Yes, yes, I agree. Okay. I do have two final comments, quick comments. First, and I think I have told you that during your qualifying. First, you don't fight yeah. Dr. Newton Brickles. He has done some good work on the Apnoid models. It, it yes. works to include some of his works in the reference list you have here. That's the first comment. But the second comment is, once again, you have a section on voltage stability. You show some basic concepts, but you don't talk anything about voltage stability. How you want to analyze uh what's the focus if you want to have a load margin if you want to identify the critical areas if you want to yes, have yes. a long-term response yes but when so, it comes to the results it's kept it's kept forgotten that's what i mean i, I don't know why you are keeping that section over there okay so yes i first uh Actually, I, I have con contacted you to find the papers of this author that you mentioned, and I I didn't found it. I ask you, please, if you can provide me the, the paper. I'm sorry for not in, for, for not inserting that. And the second point is uh, the voltage uh, stability is uh, I, I think I, I didn't provide many uh, efforts to that because the Victor inertia, it deals first with frequency, deals direct, directly with uh, frequency uh, support. Then I just let the droop controller to do the voltage support of the grid. And uh, as the voltage stability is more like a pontual, is not a global thing, uh, Maybe to create this analyze, to, to, to perform an analysis of voltage stability, we may look in the whole, in a, in a extended system, in a distribution system where we may have this uh, voltage variation in, in different parts of the system. And I didn't deal with that. I just deal with the voltage locally as in a point because the, the the stability of the voltage is made is more local than uh, the frequency which is a general uh variable for for the whole system so that that's why i didn't uh was so uh extended uh, extensively talking about the voltage stability yeah, I mean, uh, monitoring voltage level is different from analyzing voltage stability. That's why I think you should talk to your supervisors about the convenience of keeping that section in your thesis. But that's okay. Um, okay. From my side, these are the questions, and I'd like to congratulate you and your supervisors. I think you did a good work. And thank you. Thank you. Congratulations once again. And now we go to Dr. Francoise, please, to place your questions or comments. Thank you very much and welcome. 
Okay, thank you, Professor Zamboni. Um, I will be very short. Um, I would like uh, first to thank uh, all the members of the committee for agreeing to join uh, this committee and also for this uh, rich and instructive uh, discussion we just uh, had. Um, I would like to thank also uh, the rapporteur, Professor Claudio Toronto, uh, Toronto, sorry, and uh, Professor Didier Georges for their concise and um, pertinent uh, reports with a lot of uh, constructive uh, comments that help for improving the, the text of the defense of the thesis. And also I am very great, grateful to uh, Gilne and Professor Paolo Ribeiro uh, for their fruitful and efficient uh, guidance uh, uh, all, all, along, uh, all along the work of uh, Philippe. Um, finally, uh, Philippe, uh, I wanted to uh, warmly uh, congratulate uh, you for the quality of the work, of your, of your work. Uh, you. In short words, I would say that uh, it was done uh, sometimes with uh, difficult uh, circumstances and uh, always with your uh, kindness. Kindness. Okay. Um, I hope we will continue to work uh, on, the, on the extremely interesting research lines you mentioned at the end of your defense. So sure. let me congratulate you and um, I wish we will. Uh, continue work together. Okay, sure, thank, thank you. you. Thank so you it was very, very short. Much. Yeah. Thank you very much and welcome. And now we go to Dr. June. Please, you may address your points. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. I don't know what's going on. Junei, Junei, please, we can't hear you. Mets ton I, I micro. Hear you. As pas ton micro, Junei. No, not yet. No. No, not yet. No. Oh. Once again, Junei, I. Dans Google Meet, ton micro il est pas activé en fait. Ok, so in the meantime, ah, 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 oh, essaye là. Je vais juste connecter et connecter again okay. to see if it works. Allô, allô, est-ce que là ça va? Yes. yes. Ok, now it's okay. Um, because there were two buttons for that. There was one button there and another button here. So, well, anyway. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, the viewers and the examiners, for uh, being here for all this uh, work. I'd like to mostly congratulate Felipe for all this work. He did a wonderful work. Remembering that he arrived here, he had a strong background in power systems and power electronics, but he had almost no knowledge on control. He had to study a lot and he did a very good job on this. So uh, I'm very proud of seeing how how Philip managed to to do so so much in so in few years actually. So thank you very much, Philippe, for for all you, you you have done, and it will be a pleasure. We continue, so we will finish uh, making all the reviews, all the corrections to to the manuscript and continue yeah. say, sending our papers. We are already doing some uh, writing other papers yet to submit and uh, continue doing the work. So I think it's the only yeah. thing to, to say, just a very good job. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jeanne. Thank you very much, Dr. Jeanne. Um, following Glauco's background, which is uniting Brazil and France, we now give Dr. Paulo Ribeiro the chance to place his comments. Thank you very much. First of all, likewise, Professor Jeanne, I would like to to thank all the members of the jury, uh, the reviewers, uh, the rapporteurs uh, for the great work, which uh, will uh, improve the final quality of the, of the work. And also congratulate Filippi uh, for the work, for the research uh, that he carried out uh, under the supervision uh, of Professor Junet uh, and myself. I'd like to express my uh, pleasure in working together with Professor Junet in advising uh, Filippi. Uh, this work has been for me also an opportunity to relearn some concepts because I graduated in control systems, moved into power systems and transmission planning, uh, and then later on worked with uh, electrification of industrial AC railways and high power electronics. So I had to uh, go back and review some concepts and it was an opportunity to, to relearn. So Philippe, you have done a good work. All the best with your future career. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Paulo. Zambroni. Thank you very much, Paulo. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, we still have a few guests in the room here. What I suggest, Philippe, uh, I think we have your contact. What I suggest is to go out of the room for a while because we need to discuss okay, the kind okay. of results for your thesis. Yes, and yes. we ask please everybody to go out for a while. You're welcome to return as soon as we have a final decision here. Philippe, please see you in a few minutes. Okay, okay. okay. See you, see you guys.